this is real a real bomb. It's fully you functioning, but you gotta use a vacuum pump to clear the chamber. Well that sucks. My name is Jack Maxwell. I once had a job as the booze explorer. Here we go, here we go. But then I got sucker punched by cancer. I then started a whole new journey. Oh my God, is that good. The culture of cannabis. I have cancer, it doesn't have me. Come on, up on the magic bus with me and let's hit the high road. <laughs> How many museums that you know of are fun right from the jump? Well, this one in Las Vegas is. Why? Well, check out this guy. Hi. <laughs> you must be Blaze. <laughs> How you doing? Excellent, excellent. You look like a criminal on the old Batman series. <laughs> it's like the Riddler, except instead of asking questions, I just get you stoned and make you do math. It's great. Thank you. Thank so you. let's, yeah, what's this all about? You're going to have a lot of fun in our Wonderland of Weed today. Wonderland of Weed, where do we start? Absolutely. We're going to start outside. Our... Lead the way. Absolutely, right this way. All Follow right. me, buddy, come on. Oh, Batman. We're going to start your session back about 5,000 years ago in ancient China. That's because they gave us our first actual medicinal background of cannabis, and one of the most practical uses was giving it to women through child labor. They'd actually sip it as they would be giving birth to help ease the pains of delivery. No kidding. That said, our founding fathers continued that tradition of using it as medicine. They even drafted the declaration on hemp paper. Weed the people, huh? It has been in use since as long as the country's been founded. Apparently enough to make a museum over. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go see. All right, all right. All right. Oh, special side door. Welcome Nick to the 420 Andrew. room. Come oh, on. none of you who see this go in this door because it's never really open. I'm sure you've heard lots of re uh, legends and rumors about what 420 is, why stoners celebrate it. You're going to tell common. me the real answer? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, first of all, what's, the most, what's the, the most common misperception what, uh, about That's 420? That's Bob Marley's birthday. That's actually February 6th, but most of the population here in the U.S. think that it's Bob Marley's birthday. The actual story is about a group of boys from San Rafael Valley, California, called the Waldos. They smoked a bunch of weed at 420 after school one day, and school actually released newspapers stating the dangers of 420 and the new lingo kids are using to get high. How high do you have to be to associate a rhino with cannabis? I don't understand. White rhino is a really popular hybrid out there. So his name is? That's our white rhino. But he has no name. Maybe we huh. can name him after you? Jack the Rhino, why not? <laughs> I have been called Jack the Wino. It's very close. Hey, nothing wrong with that. So everything here is meant for you to play around with for photos. You look like you're right out of Batman now. <laughs> right out of Batman. <laughs> All right, so the next part's pretty cool. Let's talk about terps. I'm sure you're wondering why there's fruit hanging above our head. The clear gave us this whole wall to talk about extracts and how they're made. I'm sure you've seen people smoking those pens. They're full of uh, what's called distillate. And they add terpenes back into them to give them flavors as well as some of the effect. All right, so, so what, is, what are we walking into here? Well, we've got some space weed, we've got Panama Red, some Girl Scout cookies, AK, and some strawberry cough over there. Yo, and this stop. is our hug and That is not right. You don't call this Girl Scout cookies. There is something to stay away from. Why is it Girl Scout cookies? You can't do that. They're little kids making money. Hey, those little kids girls? making money are smart. A lot of Girl Scouts post up in front of dispensaries. We all know Stone has got munchies. And that one? That's AK. Very popular strain. Has lots of orange and red pistols growing on its green surface. Definitely a classic bud and a definitely a classic image. I wouldn't want to go anywhere near this. This looks like a prop from a Mucinex commercial. <laughs> I love that it's so interactive but it's very artistic as well. You hey, know, if you like actually, interactive, maybe you should uh, go swing on cloud nine. I know you wanna. Oh, I wanna ride that. To yeah. showcase the sky high effects that sativas are known for. Oh, don't die. Don't chicken little on me. Give me a push, Blaze. Oh, thanks for telling me the war. Okay. There you go. What is that? Looks like a science project. This is the world's biggest bong, Bongzilla. This is real, a real bong. It's fully you're... functioning, but you gotta use a vacuum pump to clear the chamber. Oh, that sucks. People get married here, yes. and you're a reverend. Yes. And during actual weddings, this whole thing's set up with a proper altar. There's weed all around the canopy. I even have a bouquet and boutonniere with pot leaves all around it for the couples. 
I would never do this in real life. But I'm going to leave you at the altar. Thank you for your time. That was fun. Absolutely, good, my good friend. stuff. You're going to be the owner of this someday. Can you stay right here? I just got to make a quick phone no call. No problem. I'll have myself right. a little smoke break. Okay, please do. Hello, Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner, we found him. Tell Batman to come get him. Take a ride with me on this high road. And now we have with us J.J. Walker, who's the founder and CEO of the Cannabis Museum in Las Vegas. Hey, J.J. Hey, man, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. That was so fun. But I have to ask, what happened to that guy, Blaze? Is he still around? You know, Blaze is still around. Uh, he, he is the best customer service guy I've ever seen. And uh, he's actually over at uh, Planet 13 right now helping guests out uh, uh, with their dispensary buys. So he has two jobs or do you own both? Uh, so no, we're actually partnering with Planet 13 and uh, going to be building Cannabition 2.0 over there uh, very shortly. Fantastic. I have to ask you, just as a sidebar, J.J. Walker's very famous name. Is that your real name? <laughs> uh, J.J. Walker is actually, uh, well, Justin James. And uh, but, yeah, it, it seems like anyone over about the age of 45 may say uh, dynamite when they see me. <laughs> sure. Not only that, there was a uh, there are several, I think, DJs that are, are named J.J. Walker. So uh, so good for you for sticking with it. You own it, right? <laughs> That's yeah, it. But, hey, buddy. Yeah. Because that's well. you. So that <laughs> I had such a good time there. It's so interactive. Uh, and, and it's for novices, for, for people who know what they're talking about. Uh, how did you come up with the idea? Oh, man. I mean, cannabis has been sort of a, a, a lifetime of, of bringing together my different backgrounds. Uh, I've been an event producer for, for 20 plus years and got in the marijuana industry, fortunately, in Colorado in 2009 uh, by opening one of the first dispensaries there. And um, through that, uh, got a lot of great opportunity to kind of learn the industry. Uh, we built a dispensary uh, that I ended up getting to sell. And we started a marijuana tour company that then eventually led into uh, building this immersive cannabis museum after I learned about these other cool interactive attractions called like Meow Wolf and uh, Museum of Ice Cream that are uh, very art-driven, Instagrammable museums. And I thought it would be uh Really cool to do that in the cannabis industry. It's funny you made that reference. I've been to Meow Wolf, and when I went to Cannabis, I said, "This is a little like Meow Wolf, but for cannabis." <laughs> there you go. There you go. It worked out then. It's exactly what I said. It, it's funny though. If you said um, we're going to have a museum about cannabis, it, it would sound kind of dry. I mean, I, that's why it's such a good idea to make it interactive. Things you can touch, things you can see, all kind of uh, artwork, a swing you could swing on, etc. A place where people get married. Because I, I would think if it's just a museum, I, I don't know that there'd be that kind of interest, right? Yeah, there's not the, I mean, if you think about it, you get stoned. Uh, people think of, uh, some people think of stoners as lazy, but I actually think of stoners as very active and um uh exper experience kind of driven and 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 cannabis is sort of the forefront of what i see the future of social consumption being meaning like the ability to consume cannabis in public spaces and versus the idea of just sitting around and smoking some weed uh people want to interact and have fun and there's so many cool new technologies and and uh these new immersive experiences that i thought it would apply really well into educating people and also entertaining them while stoned or not stoned how do you get past the idea of someone hearing about a cannabis museum, regardless of the clever name, and say, well, I'm not really a user, that wouldn't be for me, or I'm against it, that wouldn't be for me? H how do you get the general public to understand it's kind of fun whether you consume or not? Uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's definitely been, uh, I, I would say, kind of a challenge. Uh, there are people that understand it and fall in love with it, and that's, uh, that's our base audience that has really come in, and people fly in from all over the country to actually come and experience cannabis uh, for what it is. And, and then we have a lot of walkie buys and, uh, that kind of peek their head in and want to learn a little bit more, and sometimes we convert them, sometimes we don't, but that's kind of the beautiful thing about Las Vegas is that there's so many different things that people uh, wouldn't regularly do that they may check out. And so that's why we actually enjoy uh, being here as far as our first location for uh, for this experience. We referred to uh, Meow Wolf 
in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, to me, it's maybe one of the coolest places I've ever been. Uh, for those yeah. who don't know, it's also expanding to other cities now because of its popularity. Uh, great demand for it. For those who don't know, look it up. It's fascinating. Uh, and go see it if you get a chance. Um, but they change out uh, things every once in a while to mix it up for people who have been. Do you do the same thing? Um, absolutely. We are actually now in transition into a amazing new location. It's actually our dream location. It's, uh, it's still here in Las Vegas. It's uh, called Planet 13, which is technically the world's largest dispensary. Uh, they have like well over 100,000 people a month that walk through their front doors. And so we've uh, we've secured a lease with them, and now we're in the preparation mode of building uh, the next biggest uh, – badass uh, cannabis experience of the world and take everything that we learned from uh, from this first from this first location that we had and and really do something extraordinary and and part of the extraordinary thing that we're actually creating is the ability to interchange exhibits every six months and uh, with the exhibits actually being built in shipping containers of all things so the shipping containers come in and out and people have these uh, immersive cannabis experiences and these uh, sponsored uh, 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 little exhibits built in, in these containers and and uh, and then eventually that those containers will actually be traveling around the country so people can have uh, those experiences all over the place. One thing I noticed on the side of the wall as soon as you walk up to the museum and Blaze pointed this out, uh, it's the uh, about the founding fathers and and hemp, the history of hemp, etc. But inside, it's mostly interactive. There's not really the history inside laid out and there's not uh you know, how it all turned with reefer madness and prohibition in 1937. You purposely decided to make it more visual, more of an aesthetic uh, than a history lesson. Yeah, we wanted to focus kind of more on the plan itself and uh, the history of that, of that, not so much heavily into the politicking of uh, the legalization or not legalized, legalized cannabis. And so, uh, for us, we started with a narrative. And so before we st you know, built one thing, we sat down in a room together, we came up with ideas and we talked and we created a story. And so the story really progressed from this idea of, OK, we're we going to tell the history of cannabis or are we cannabis? And so we took it from a mindset of like, OK, what if we were actually THC? And uh, that was the foundation that we created when we built out each of these installations. And so you go as you go through each different room, it's kind of taking you on this journey of being THC. I I'm not going to lie. I have some friends who say, hey, have you ever seen this movie? It's better when you're stoned. Have you ever done this? It's better when you're stoned. Uh, if you'll allow me saying, I think a trip through your museum is for people who are probably consuming. I'm sure it's going to heighten that experience. No? I mean, uh, cannabis heightens a lot of things. I, I actually like to smoke weed and run. <laughs> so go on a good jog and smoke some weed. I'm telling you, it's going to be in, in, in heightened up. So wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. Mission... <laughs> Hold on. You, you, you consume... You, you, you get high, smoke cannabis, whatever you want to say, and then go for a jog? Oh, absolutely. How is it, it different than when you high. don't? I got to know this. It gets that runner high going real quick, and you get that really good music set going in your head, and you get that flow going. And, uh, you know, running is a lot more mental than it is almost physical in a lot of ways as you start kind of progressing in, in the sport and uh, cannabis kind of really helps calm the mind and get you focused on uh, on other things and then the fact that you're running. <laughs> I never would have put that together. That is, that's fascinating. I, I never would have done that <laughs> ever. I mean, no, there's some things we did on the show uh, with probably next week's episode. We painted, you know, there's the CBD It's also in Las Vegas. Uh, paint mm -hmm. and puff, and there are other things, cooking, cannabis, etc. But running, I've never tried that. Well, you're going to have to give it a shot. Pretty easy to <laughs> do. Just, just smoke it, put on those shoes, and get outside. <laughs> Generally speaking, I'm not I'm not a, a casual user. I did it for medicinal purposes, and that's the journey of the high road. Uh, but uh, you have intrigued me. <laughs> let, let, let's say that. So uh, one thing that makes your museum so unique one of many is as soon as you walk in you're greeted with this uh this wonderful aesthetic like i said but this by this larger than life character blaze lynn who uh certainly patterns himself after some kind of cartoon character or the riddler as we as we landed on in batman yeah. how did you find a guy like that and it was was that your idea or his 
Oh man, uh, the the best of the best came out of the woodwork to come work at Cannabition. Uh, being a, a tour guide at Cannabition was more than just money. It was uh, people took real pride in it. Clearly, I had an advantage. He took me around for a solo tour. But how does it work if people come into the museum? Um, it's about a 45 minute to an hour long experience. Uh, the tour guides really help enhance uh, uh, the education throughout it, where the uh, installations and, 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 the, and going through being at THC uh, really give some cool visual uh, aesthetic aspects, and there is definitely some the language that you can read throughout the exhibits. Uh, the tour guides add that other kind of level of, of real uh, education about the history, culture, and celebration of cannabis. What's the most popular part of the museum? Like, I'm sure you had, if you don't, any more comment cards or people on the way out the door that say they love this part of it. What's the most popular part, JJ? Oh, absolutely. The most popular part is that we own the world's largest bong. It is a functional 25 foot bong. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Best of luck in the future. I'll come back and, uh, and pay you a visit. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Yeah, you guys take care and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks, JJ. So long, man. JJ Walker, founder and CEO of Cannabis Museum. If you're in Vegas, it's fun, whether you consume or not. Uh, but you can certainly learn a few things. And it's an uh, interesting, fun, and uh, kind of wacky place. But ask for Blaze. That guy is just so funny. I'm sure all of them are good. Thanks for joining me on the high road. We'll see you right here next time. Bye-bye.